Hello. What's up? Pseudo, please. It's too loud. I should probably turn it down a bit. Okay, finally. Finally. Boot up that unto eight. Well, morning then. It could possibly be where we get a working bot. I think today is mostly going to be putting IP packets into strings. Come here, please. Please. Right. Unto. Perfect. Um, if my voice is cutting out, just tell me. It's a bit weird. I have a noise gate. Please, harass me. Okay, here we go. Do you have any suggestions on splitting IP packets into strings? I have to use a buffer of some kind. Okay, is that better? I cut off the noise gate, so that should be better. All right, let's run slurp. And let's get good old dust box up. So, do you have any suggestions on how to split IP packets? Because I'm kind of just winging it here. I have no idea what I'm doing. <coughs> 7777. Is it? Nice. Um, so, I'm going to have an IP packet. Let me get my... I don't have GIMP or anything, so... I'm going to have an IP packet that's probably of an arbitrary length, maximum 1500. 
and so I'm assuming it's going to contain some lines and possibly some lines if it's full that will get cut into the next packet. So I'm basically going to need a function that will um, copy the lines to a buffer and pass those to a function. And probably prepare for when a line gets truncated or something if the other packet doesn't arrive. I mean it's TCP so you would accept you would expect sorry that uh, it would arrive but it might not I'm thinking that I would only really I'd pass a string no I'm gonna have to copy it to a buffer anyway so we'll see I don't know how I'm gonna test it Okay, so we have our bot directory here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to move that and we're going to make a new bot directory. And we're going to copy all of it. And let's just cd dev bot. Is that in the clean to delete those? Let's see. Clean, yeah, okay. So that deletes it. So we're just gonna make this bot.com. Packet up is IP TCP. So I don't use TCP SOCAM. Um, I might actually just leave that there. I might, I'm going to quickly just diff this with MTCP stuff. So let's see, diff MTCP, TCP lib, or bot TCP lib. So I'll remove some time stuff. Yes, so I actually have this set in this version of MTCP to not do any dynamic memory allocation. So if I run gramp malloc, it shouldn't be using it. UDP, I'm not using that. TCP, is that mallocing it? No, it's not mallocing it, I don't think. Oh, so just one extra byte. Whatevs, it works. So let's check out... Let's just go back to DOSBox and run wmake clean. Delete bot old. Check out the make file. Yeah, that's fine, I think. Let's remove the dot exe part. We're not going to be using that. Okay, that might be good. Does Dell only take one file at a time? Um, no, it's got a wildcard here for all that. Okay, so we're just gonna 
And why not have clean be one big deal? Um, I think because DOS is globbing, DOS doesn't have a very long command line. So I think the delete thing does its own globbing. I'm not sure. Or if the shell does globbing, it's going to pass a big long string. All right, let's actually start making some code. So let's do okay. No one handles command line args like Unix. Well, if you've ever used Parallel or whatever, um, you would you would know that it does run out of arguments when you don't need it to. One thing that confuses me is why arguments aren't stored in the environment in uh, Unix. It seems like the place you'd want to store it. And just have the environment be something you pass to a program. Okay, so let's just quickly check what we need to do. We're gonna need to pass the environment. We're gonna have to init the stack. My God, this is not good. Okay. TCP socket ring size. Yep, got it. I've had that problem a few times. Local port. Uh, we'll just hard code that. It's not like anything's actually using it. Um, server address. Yeah, it does need more i3. Um, what I really do want to end up doing is um, logging to the serial port because I have some plans for that. Hmm. Okay, so then we get a socket. Let's just say we're going to do port 333. I haven't included any headers yet since I'm not sure which I actually need. 233 server address. Let's actually flip those around there. Server address 6667 5000. I'm not sure what that 5000 is for. Uh, return one. Uh, I'm using a mix of tabs and spaces, aren't I? No, maybe. Oops. Uh, no, no exit. Tab. Yeah. Set, no expand tab. All right, so this is going to be a little bit hell. Wait, how many is that? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, whatever, I'll fix it later. So the socket opening failed. And then we have all that trash. So I'm actually gonna just quickly check what the actual argument here is. Get socket. Where's the socket type? Is it in types? It might be in TCP. Yeah, it's probably in TCP. 
Wait, let's connect. Timeout. All right, so we're actually going to set that to be 500 milliseconds instead of five seconds. And we're actually just going to set that to be into timeout. Is that in milliseconds? MS underscore P. So that's actually a... Why is there a P there? It's not a pointer. That's weird. Um, milliseconds. Out. And we'll just do port as well. Hey, cheese. What am I doing up? I'm doing DOS. You should get some sleep. It's sleep time o'clock. Nothing like that 4 a.m. DOS hit. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this at this point, but I want to finish something. So that's my excuse. All right. There's a lot of junk here. So let's just jump down to where we close the socket. Um, TCP socket manager free socket and then shut down zero. Write output. So let's see. So it's just a kind of Unixy write command. Um, so let's just do. I know that feeling, just published a late recap of my November activities. Feels good to have just done it before this month ticks over. Yeah. You've been working on Hive Time. Uh, Hive Time, I think. Making a game is a lot of work. Right one. What's what? Okay, I'm getting bamboozled already. Twenty-eight tester builds you've shipped. That's a lot of builds. But it's good to be shipping all those builds. I played a game once and they didn't do an update for a year, but it still had like tiny bugs that kind of ruined the game. Almost maintained a daily build schedule. Yeah, that sounds like it. So what engine have you been using that can do that? Oh, shut down is actually more stuff I need to put. You've been making half time in Godot. Has that been going well with cross-platform compatibility? F close. Pushing builds up through my build system by itch.io's Butler deployment tool. Nice. I'm gonna need my grep tool for this. stream. 
Godot works like Unity where you have a pre-compiled binary that's typically generic across all Godot projects and it's just your data files that make it run your game. Yes, because it is just a file under a fancy name. I still don't understand C's file type. I've always been skeptical of the uh, write once run anywhere thing that you would get with game engines. But there's nothing to understand. It's just an opaque blob, says Cos. I know, it's, but it's a, the API behind it. Okay, if, if you can't explain it in syscalls, I'm not going to understand it. I'm just, if I can't... Uh, that's the point. Yeah, I know, that's the point. Grant write. Why am I... It's writing to STD error, I think. Or a file descriptor. What API... I don't think... DOS has a write. Oh, I'm I'm getting bamboozled, and I don't know how much I like it. Okay, it has a write and see. I thought that was a Unix thing. Are you thinking of F write? Huh. Yeah. The more I look at this code, the more confused I am by it. So I'm going to look a little bit more at the reference code. Yeah, write once... She says, yeah, write once run anywhere is only as good as upstream support is, right? I have some Macs here to do Mac testing and external testers to test Windows builds. So far, Godot has been mostly solid, but Windows users can't take OS screenshots when in full screen. You can do that in Linux now. I suppose with SDL2 you can. I know SDL1 would just grab your keyboard and not let go. They have the Steam overlay. And that's like, basically, the OS game is run now. Let's look at ping. This is kind of interesting to me because you can actually just send raw packets. It doesn't matter if your packets are... What are you hooking into? A timer? All right. Um, it doesn't matter if you just have a special packet you want to spoof. You can just send it. And that's pretty cool. Commiserations. Yes, Coz is talking about leaving his job soon. January 20th. You have to work with the biggest Windows fanboy. Isn't Windows just kind of like something that people begrudgingly like? They're like, yeah, I have to use Windows, but Linux doesn't work and it's nothing better and I have to run my Adobe Autodesk. Not that person? Hmm. Packet, send packet. Is that what I'm supposed to do? He actually likes it because his game industry brainwashed. I've never found development of anything on Windows easy. So I'm a bit confused about that. Oh, I see. This isn't actually to write the packet. It's to write the output to the screen. Gotcha. And that's flushing. Most, Cheese the Great says, most of the Windows users I know constantly complain about the problems they experience, but they never really seem to blame Windows. It's almost as always a big shrug, and that's computers for you. Yeah, that's the, that's the kind of Windows um, begrudgingly stuff I like. It's just a Windows plus C++ plus plus pipeline full of shit, in my experience. Yeah. Um, C++ plus plus on Windows has always been really bad. 
there's no package manager for it. So you just end up using the Win32 API or whatever. I think .NET is supposedly better, but I haven't used it yet. I might try it one day. You know, YOLO. What am I looking for? So I don't need any of that. Um, that is for sending. All right. What we might actually do is just handle receiving for now because we are connecting to an active socket. So we have our inner loop that uses a while one. That's a bit strange. All back, next job, all backend, all Haskell, all Linux. Yeah, that's uh, that's decent. You're gonna build like blockchains. Is that what people build now? Let's do. Lol, no. I'm actually. I'm actually gonna move this to a different function. Oh no, not yet. But this really should be in a function that I can use with an actual while loop. It's like data processing stuff. Oh, so big data. You know, if you say big data for <laughs> big data first, it sounds like you're saying big data. She says, a while back I've decided I've worked my last job where I had to use Windows. Feels very good not to have touched Windows in nearly a decade. Are you still haven't used Windows yet since we last talked? That's pretty good. My friends, my friend really wants a Mac and I don't know how to process that. If remote closed is zero, why do we have that there? Okay, that's interesting. So let me make a note about that. I should run this after the remote closes. I don't have any current slash relevant Linux experience, so I'm no longer employable in Windows-based environments. What? Do you mean like Windows experience? Do you have five years experience in Word 2007 yet? Yeah, any current slash relevant Windows experience. Well, I'll have you know that Windows 10 now lets you delay updates. So, all the problems are fixed. <laughs> yes, it's it still hasn't removed all the surveillance capitalism stuff, but you know, that's just what you expect nowadays with computers. You know, we have like an Alexa in the house now, and I just expect that to just copy all the things I've ever said to Amazon's cloud and then get hacked and not get any financial compensation for that. Valiant says, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Windows was still silently installing critical updates regardless of user settings. Well, did you know that Microsoft probably can't give you the answer to that because they now use machine learning to send updates to people? It's not like Linux updates. <laughs> yeah, machine learning is known. I'm just going to extend what you said and just say machine learning is known as plausible deniability. That's not quite what you said, but that's how I read it. It's also known as bullshit, says Cos. Yeah. Oh.
you're technically an AI researcher, Cos. Well, what's it like living the big life? Oh, this file is going to be a mix of tabs and spaces. And I'm just thinking right now, I'm just going to go all out and just tab all this stuff retroactively. Oh, this doesn't have visual mode. Well, I guess not. I guess I'll just have it be a mix of tabs and spaces. It's not big or much of a life. But you can pour data into our neural network and then results will come out. That's the tech we want. Okay. This code here that I'm copying looks jank as all hell. She says, it seems like a lot of AI shops are focused on talking their stuff up big in the hopes of getting acquired before anyone notices that it's not super reliable. Yeah, that's a lot of tech, but AI is a really good example of that. Cos says, they don't explain shit, can't be interrogated, and basically don't do anything except make it look like you did something. Yeah, that's a little bit why I'm confused as to why everyone's like, AI is going to take our jobs. It's like... I guess AI can be trained to do things, but if you need them to like do something else for a day, that's going to cost like millions of dollars to retrain them, right? Where with a human, you can just say, don't do that. I don't know. I liked, I liked the latest Android stuff. Any of your games, says Cheese, in response to Cos saying, name one thing made in the last 10 years, which isn't a reinvitation of shit, you'll fail. Yep, your games are pretty good. Did you uh, get the UE scaling for uh, Hive Time going yet, Cheese? Or is that in the uh, the list? Okay, so I'm writing code and I don't understand what it is, so I'm just going to stop doing that and read some documentation. You're kind of hamstrung on that front due to decisions you made back when you thought you were still working on a jam game. Yikes. Yes, everything begins as a one-time hack, which is why you usually throw out um, the prototype. All of Hive Time's development philosophy has been focused on doing as much as I can with it all. Yeah, that's fair. This doesn't dequeue packets. How does it know if it has a response received? Cos asks if Hive Time has a web page. I think it's on the itch website. It has both. Sweet. Do you want to post your URL, Cheese? I haven't played Hive Time because I don't have a machine to uh, play it with at the moment. DNS. Oh, this is a this is a lot of stuff here to unpack. This API. It's a B based, sorry, it's a B themed based builder management sim. Does it have Jerry Seinfeld? Because that's where I kind of tune out when it comes to B products. I think he kind of topped it. 
when he did that stunt where he flew down in a bee costume. God, the development of the bee movie. If you haven't heard of the development of the bee movie, it's really worth looking it up. Because, in a nutshell, it's basically Jerry Seinfeld is like, let's make a bee movie. And then a producer's like, sure. And then Jerry's like, okay, I guess I'll make one. And then he starts making one, and it, he just has to hold the entire thing together for the entire of the develop for the entire development cycle. And it's a sad story, but it's hilarious too, because it seems like something that would happen in an episode of Seinfeld. Send and wait. Why is this doing ARP stuff? I don't want it to do ARP stuff. ARP. ARP. Okay. Let's check out FTP. I don't know why I'm checking that out. I should just the most piratical par <laughs> the most piratical protocol. What type of computer am I working on here? This is actually a virtual machine. So this is the real machine. And this is a virtual machine. This is running Ubuntu Mate and my virtual machine is running It doesn't have a Linux standard base. It's running to be in stretch, I believe. I haven't updated it to Buster yet. I probably should. Okay, let's look at the user documentations. setup. I don't think this has API stuff in here. Dev docs. Coding. So there's docs for the developments of MTCP and docs for the users. But there's no docs for me. If you end up wanting to give Hive time a try, it seems to run on pretty low-end machines if you turn off shadows and anti-aliasing and set the B count sound to zero. Main requirement is OpenGL 3 point something. Uh, oh. Sorry, wrong window. Yeah, I have the OpenGL 3 point something. That should work. All right, so let's go to include. No, that's the wrong include. Okay, let's just see what's in TCP. It's really strange that the old bot code that I have, is it opened up here, doesn't use the TCP packet structure there, even though it seems to cast it. Hmm. Does it handle 
non-TCP packets? That's an interesting question. Although I suppose the socket part would handle that. Where am I going? It would be in types.h, I believe. No, nope, it wouldn't be in there. Of course not. Is that a TCP? That's a socket manager. That's also interesting here because it says it's possible for a user to allocate their own buffers and use them along with these buffers. That's bizarre, but possible. But then it does that here. It copies it to the file buffer. And then it frees the packet. Hmm. Bizarre, but possible. C++ in a nutshell. A little bit. She says, I love it when code slash documentation tells you, you can do this, I guess, but I don't know why you'd want to. Yeah. I guess it's just to show off that you can do it. It's like, well, I'm not going to stop you from shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so we have a TCP socket class here. Okay, so we have connect, connect, non-blocking. Yeah, this library has non-blocking, and I don't know why you would want to use that. I guess... Well, I guess you really would want to use non-blocking in DOS since you don't have threading. And C++ friends have access to your private members. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so DQ negative return cones are bad. So we have a receive and send here. And I've got NQ, which almost should be private. So should I be using send and receive? Where's DQ? Where is it? Am I blind? I don't see any... Is it DQing somewhere else? It's in the socket. So why does the... DQ isn't found. Where did this code come from? Us, oh, cheese. It came from the uh, MTCP website. So I believe the code is from 2013. Yes. And it's a TCP IP stack in DOS. And it works. Fairly well. But like all small kind of hobbyist projects, it can be confusing. My socket incoming dot DQ. 
Oh. So I'm actually violating. I'm looking at the raw incoming packets. Who doesn't name their socket variables Socky? Um, I don't know. That's what you have to name them. There's nothing else to name them. Okay, so it's probing directly into the ring buffer there. Why? Why is it not using send receive? What is this code doing? This is a bad example. Okay. That's okay. TCP include. So we have, sorry, TCP lib. Let's check out the TCP code and we'll look at the send receive. Reinit set receive buffer. People who don't name their sockets socks sound like boring people. Yeah. Set receive buffer. Why have a return code here? I don't know. So I'm responding to the source code. I don't know why it says that. Oh, so that's a breaking close there. So if I close it when the remote part is closed, then I shouldn't actually need to rerun through that. Huh. Close non blocking. Is close done. Destroy. And queue. Users don't send packets, they enqueue them. So I enqueue a TCP buffer. And that is over here. Okay. And I shouldn't be using that. I should be using send and receive. So let's see what send and receive do. Should just be using page down. Nope. Thank you. Resend packet. Code folding would be pretty good here, but I guess uh, Pluma doesn't have it. A lot of code ending with function names that have two at the end. Okay, let's just search up a send. Okay, so we send a user buffer, and what does that do? Okay, that copies it. So it copies from a buffer. And what does, do we have a receive up here? Is this receive? And that will receive stuff. Yeah. That seems fine. It does copy stuff. So I guess that's what this code is trying to avoid by using the direct buffers. Um, I don't think I'll worry about that for now. That seems a little 
oh no, it, it wouldn't be racy because this isn't, this is, oh, I could be racy because we do have interrupts in DOS. I don't want to, exciting, yeah, it just seems, a l oh, so you copy the file buffer anyway, so what is it doing? Okay, so we have send and receive. So what we might actually just do is socket send. Let's send something. Um, user buff and user buff length. Um, let's just send user. Uh, that's not going to work. That's a pointer. Can I... Okay, that would be really weird C code. So I'm just going to do... Would that work? I think that would work. So we send something and then let's receive something. And that should be the same thing. And then we should probably just print it. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, go get some sleep, cheese. Thanks for dropping by. You too. So that code there is kind of insane. Hmm. What do we do if the remote is closed? Is there a way to just, can we still in queue packets if the remote is closed? We'll send cry about that. Or can I just try and push packets through regardless? Okay, and we will just check is closed, is remote closed, what's the difference there? Okay, so that's what I definitely want to use in my for loop. Um, suck right, closed. Let's put that there. Make that a while loop. Buff out. Buff in. And, um, hmm. This seems like bad code. So I'm just gonna do static int sent equals zero, sent equals one. So it only sends that at the start. That seems completely fine and won't be a problem at all. Actually, I might just queue that up before I do anything. <coughs> I 
<clears throat> so let's do let's send some stuff in the socket there and then let's do a while loop here Okay. Now, I believe that should be a good enough loop. And there is a way to shut down, but I don't think our bot's ever really going to be shutting down the TCP connection. Okay, so. Let's try and figure out what we need in the includes. We're going to need STDIO. I think we're going to need utils. Um, no, we're going to need packet up and TCB. And TCP sock manager. Okay, let's try making this. Um, I have no doubt this is going to fail, but I'm just going to do a quick read through. No, we don't have a TLC stream. Um, socket connect. Yep. I didn't include the types, and these should not be bracketed ones, I don't think. String, do I use anything from a string? I don't think so. io.h, fc, intel. Nope, and the syntax looks fine. I'm not sure about that IP address initialization syntax. Um, hmm. This is going to be confusing because I'm not exactly sure how it's going to run and I think it might need a delay somewhere. Utils and stack has not been defined. Received uses unsigned characters. Syntax errors. Okay, that's a lot to unpack. So let's go over here and we do just cast that to a unsigned character and that does look a little bit funky I think one yeah that should be there I think so I missed that and stack Yeah, there should be an end stack thing. Why didn't that work? Did I include the right file? Utils.h. Have I forgotten to include the configuration file at the top? 
No. Okay, well, let's just try again. We can have a peek at the errors. Symbol socket has not been declared. Okay, how about now? All right, so it looks like it should work. Let's open up. I don't think we have Slurp running, but let's uh, open it up now and <coughs> this is using SSL. I think it might be. Let me just check. Six six six. It's not six six nine seven. So it should be fine. And then we're going to do Wireshark. Okay, Slurp is running now. Let's look at the loopback connection and then let's try and run bot.com. So let's see what we've done here. We have sent. Trash. Um, that's not very good. Let's close that out. And try and figure out what happened here. No, everything is not working correctly just because it's trash. So let's have a look at, let's review the code. So it connects to port 1234 and that's the slurp connection. And then slurp send stuff back. So we're actually looking at tunneled stuff, I believe. So I don't actually think slurp is working. So let's just kill old slurp. Um, yeah. Let's edit out slurp RC2. I'm not sure if slurp is going to forward netcat properly. What is, oh, DOSBox is connected. Okay. So cat, okay. No, definitely not. Address already in use. Why are you doing this to me? That's not nice. It's not fair. How about now? Yay, okay. So that's slurp running. 
So let's boot up DOSBox. I really wish it would just... Can we create a launcher from this? Copy to... Can I just drag this up there? Is this a launcher? Did I already create... A... Yes, I did. I just didn't click it. Okay. My bad. Okay. Um, let's just watch the traffic again. Um, and let's watch it on all interfaces in case something weird is going on. Just just load it from any. Start. Continue without saving. And let's run. But. Um, what? What happened here? Okay, so something connects to 6667, and I believe this would be slurp and it keeps retransmitting something now I would believe that that could that be my packet that's a bit spooky Okay, let's head back to DOSBox. And let's edit the bot. And just see what we have going here. Now, is my buffer not working? It looks like it should be working. Perhaps it's in a receive thing forever. So let's say we're gonna process packets. And let's actually just add a BIOS key check. Or, hmm. I really want this to stop executing after a while so I don't have to reopen DOSBox. So that might be the next thing to do. Okay, let's try this. And see what we have here. So I don't see any packet processing packets. Which is not a good sign. So... I believe I'm using the API wrong. And let's just edit the auto exit here. Since I just want to always go to the dev directory. I don't know if it actually will take me to the dev directory. Can I do CD, C drive, Dev bot. All right. So it's always receiving stuff for a long time because it's blocking. Okay. Receive is blocking. Hmm. That's not what I need. Is it? Will receive actually run the process single and drive up and drive packets thing? If so, that could be what I need. 
Let's investigate. Chance the number of bytes read or an error code. So what if we change that to greater than zero? And we write process done. Oops. This vim is laggy and I don't like it. Process single. Okay, let's just see, does this also do drive up? Packet process single. And then for TCP we have drive packets. What does drive packets do? I think maybe I should have those switched around. Okay, let's see. Let's also do the BIOS key thing. So I can hit control C. And uh, quick quit. Alt X. So let's see. BIOS key one. If BIOS key one, if BIOS key. Damn, this looks tricky. If bars key zero, then we take that packet and shift it to get the upper eight. And then we want to do if key equals Let's just shift that by eight. There. Um, then we'll break out. There we go. And that should cause shutdown. Okay. Oops, I forgot to include BIOS key. Yeah. I believe that would be in Conio. Let's just see. No. Um, oh, it would be in BIOS. What? Oh, I can actually pipe stuff into this. That's strange and haunting in a way. Okay, so let's just W make again. And we'll see how this goes. So it's processing packets, and if I hit Alt X, it quits. Yes, I think that's what I want.
And so now we can see what it has been processing. We might actually add a delay first thing. Delay 500, I suppose. What did I use for a delay here? Delay 1000? Yeah, uh, I'll use delay 500 for now. Um, what do I need for delay? That would be like time or something, wouldn't it? I don't know. But more importantly, why isn't this working? What even is my IP? So we're two and that's sending it to 100. What? Why is it sending it to 100? That's like weird. It shouldn't be doing that. Slap's not bound on anything. Yeah, it's sending it to 10.0.0.100. Why? Um, I'm sure the answer is actually in my slurp stuff. So let's go have a look. That goes to 0.2.100. What does SSL chat do? That netcats it. So the only reason I can think that it would be a hundred is because it's missed the two. So did I forget to put a two there? Yeah. Okay. My bad. Let's try it now. Huh? What's happened? I'm pressing buttons, however, nothing seems to be happening. Let's have a quick look at what's going on. It does seem that it is actually now connecting to the IRC server. However, it's not printing anything to the screen. So I'm actually just going to relaunch DOSBox and see if that's because I like messed something up when I last ran the bot. Okay, so it's not actually saying anything. Now, I think this might be because I've delayed it. And that's incredibly slow to do. If I hold Alt X, will it see my keybind? What is that? Okay, so it looks like it did actually shut it down. But realistically, that delay was a very, very bad idea. And I probably deserve that. I'll just use a hot loop for now. So it needs to print to STD in and STD out. Sorry, just STD out. And let's see, is this gonna run? It's not printing anything. And it doesn't look like it's actually doing any connections right now. Well, it is doing something, but it's not printing anything on the screen, and that's a little bit worrying. Mainly because it should be. I hope it's not anything to do with the interrupts. Okay. Let's just have a look. It wouldn't, it wouldn't write anything on the screen if for some reason it didn't get past connections. So let's see. 
connection start. So we're just doing a little bit of tracing here. Connection end. Let's W make that. Um, can I clear this? Yeah, okay. And then we're just going to do bot. So it hits connect start and then what? I get back to the prompt, but I can't do anything. Now that's curious. Could it be that it's actually kicking me out and I haven't registered anything properly? I haven't run the shutdown command. Okay. I think that's what might be happening. Um, it's failing or I'm not checking the return code properly and then it's bailing but it's not resetting anything so I have two errors there so what we're not going to do for now is just delete that there and we're going to write to do add shutdown function and call here on connect fail Okay, now let's try this and uh, restart this capture. Okay, so that's interesting. It's processing stuff, so let's just quit out of that. How long is it going to take to quit? And let's inspect this TCP stream. And it looks like I'm just sending trash all over it, possibly. Not entirely sure what's happening there. Um, hmm. So the first thing I'd like to do is remove um, these process single oops so shutdown does seem to take a little bit um, there's quite a lot of of junk happening here and I'm not sure what's up with that but let's just try again connect start connect and so it sends user and it should be grabbing packets as they come in so let's follow the stream and there's still junk um, and it doesn't look like it actually sent anything I probably okay let's just wait for that to time out actually um, and let's just step through what we see here so all packets starting with one two three four should actually be the packets that we're sending um, now, what is happening? Source port, destination port. So that's sending something there. What is that? Is this trying to send me something encoded? Um, data. It's always length 40, 48, 42. Hmm. Now, has it actually timed out for me yet? I'm not actually seeing it decode any IRC stuff here. 
and that's a little bit worrying because if we do follow TCP stream, it even says it's closing the link. So, what? Um, yeah, so let's just quit that. Try and figure out what's going on here. It could be that I'm sending stuff and I shouldn't be, and that's just ruined everything. So let's just not send anything at the moment. Let's just have a buffer and let's not send anything. And then we'll have it do that. And that looks like it should be fine. Um, it's also not handling remote closing. So I'm wondering if this is a slip, a slurp issue. Let's see. It's really not saying it's receiving any packets. And that's not good. Hmm. I'm going to restart DOSBox and I'm going to restart Slurp. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I hope this doesn't fix anything because then I won't know it's broken, but let's just see. Yeah. Okay, so what if I actually do a netcat to the local host? Um, I don't actually have any slurp. So I can't do that. So we have socket receive and then it prints out that there's a buffer in. Hmm. And it is processing packets. Let's just work on receiving packets for now. So, we're gonna have a buffer of say 128. Um, characters, I guess. That should be fine for now. And, hmm. We'll just get the length to um, and then we'll set the length of the buffer so like if it reads one byte then we should probably set that to a null character at least um, if it reads 128 then we're kind of screwed I guess because it will go over it. So I might actually just set that to be the size of the buffer, negative one. So we can always set that null at the end. And then we should do, I might actually put drive up back here as well. Okay, that looks okay. Let's try that. I feel like this actually has something to do with slurp though. But at the same time, it should be like notifying me of what packets there are. Yep, there's still a lot of junk there. So let's quit that and let's head back to 
our old bot code and just see what I did differently there. Pass environment, init stack, connect to the server. I am using fprintf properly. Now this actually builds packets, which I'm not doing. I don't believe that's the error though. That does key caching. So it directly decues the packets. And it's not printing anything here. So maybe it's not receiving anything. Could it be blocking and waiting for that amount of data? Because I would like a receive up to. It doesn't look like that's the case. Let's add some more tracing. Receiving. Um, and done. Oops. And we don't need that. Hmm. Let's also print out the length there. Oops. And again, just to have a quick look. Packet process single. So it is processing the packets. Hmm. So we have an error. Okay. That's interesting. So that means there is some kind of error. Why would it return that? Okay, so let's edit Let's look at the trace text file. Tried, received, in state, user juke. Um, tried to send a packet while in white. state description state and it's printing my buffer it shouldn't be printing my buffer something has gone horribly wrong here especially oh no let's just delete the trace and start a new one okay then let's pg trace. Okay. Okay, so that's possibly even more cursed than before. Um, that looks to me like not good. But dear actual God, is it good to have tracing? So the state is not actually working. Um, let's just go into RC.
and let's just do that. So if it fails to start, it won't actually do any of the main loop. What? What happened there? Nothing, I guess. Let's remove this. Let's just print the return code here. Okay. Have I... It looks like I've forgotten to init the TCP stack. Is there an init thing? No, I guess not. So that can't be the issue. So RC there is negative three. Is that because there's already a connection open? It could be. So let's actually try a different port. And I see that's why perhaps I should be using a random port. So let's just grab some of that code. Rand plus 1024. Um, I don't think rand. I'm not sure. I think that's in std lib. In fact, that should be the C stuff too. Hmm. Okay, so nothing's happening there. Let's close that and check the trace file, which I forgot to do. It takes a while to shut down. I'm not sure why that is. It could just be that it actually needs to close the stack and everything. But you should just be able to like send a TCP reset, shouldn't you? I don't know. Trace.txt. Yep. Huh, so it actually looks like it gets stuff. So it connects, it sends 60 bytes, it dumps them, it received them, it dumps it, it got a reply, it has the state. Hmm, so it gets connected there. It's not dumping the packets, which is something I would really like it to do, so I might have to tell it to do that. It keeps writing junk for the state names. So let's just figure out why that is. State description. I really don't like the idea that there's junk there. Because it sounds like we're at some kind of illegal state. 
but maybe that's fine. There's a lot of strange things going on in this file. Like data length of 48708. Something has not been set properly. Let's look at a trace by the previous code I was using. Trace. I didn't have a trace file here. Um, let's quickly go run it actually and just see. cd bot.old and let's just run bot1.com. There is a trace.txt file here. Why don't I see it? Okay. So it is actually just filling stuff with junk, which is not a good thing. at all. But it does seem to kind of indicate something's working. So let's go back to our bot code and see if there's anything that I may have overlooked. get this network capture up as well. So delete trace, but TS value, T secret, length. The lengths seem to be fine. Okay, let's cancel that follow the stream and there's junk there. I might actually just check to see with the other bot thing if there was junk. So let's just head back here. Um, do you work? Do you have junk? Yes. Why is there junk? Jeez. Wait, is there something else here? There's an alternate. Hmm. There's a lot of different streams happening here. It might be that I'm just following the wrong stream. Let's go to the bot thing again. Okay, so there is some strange stuff happening here. And I think a lot of it is to do with SoCat. So let's stop this and have a peek. So we have one stream here. And I believe this could be the slipstream. So let's clear that. And then we have an NTP stream. I don't want that. And then we have an IRC stream. So let's follow this stream. And that goes from there. So that could be SoCat there actually. So we are acting it and everything, it looks like. So 
So let's... Oh, is it that I'm not flushing the stream? That could be it. I'll have to check that in a bit. Actually, I'm like 20% sure that I'm not flushing the stream. Although it should pop up when old X stuff gets hit. So let's just put that there in our pocket. Um, could it also, no, it should print. So it's not a null error. Okay, let's look at this trace. Yeah, it looks like it's getting stuff. So that could mean that receive is not working. Let's try again. Nope. All right. So let's have a look. As to why this is not actually sending or receiving. Oh, it traces there and it says TCP receive. So does this have receive anywhere? It doesn't. I'm not receiving any packets. That's not good. I want my packets. So why are you not receiving? Let's check the length again. Size of buffer. Should this be size of buff? Oh, it's okay. I think I see what's happening. I messed up here and that should be 127. Um, because I'll never truly understand what size of means when it comes to array. Okay. Is that it? No? That's not it? Really? I've got an error? Why? I swear that was it. Okay. Socket receive buff. Should this be, is that not a pointer to the buffer? What if I dereference it? Hmm. This seems like it's going to spray all over my memory. Nope. Oh, it was right. So I'm just going to print what the length was. And then let's run wmake again. Length 10. Length 10. Why isn't it printing? I don't know. It seems like it should be printing. It seems like it should hit that exact code because it's greater than 10. And this code says it should be there. What if I put the length here, huh? Would that be fine? Hmm. 
Does the equals operator just not work in C++? Is that what it is? Let's try that. Let's see if I'm a big idiot and the C++ operator just doesn't work like how I think it is. Stupid, stupid, stupid. It can't be this. I won't let it be this. It's not. Good. Okay, so it's not printing something. And this is seriously triggering me. Okay. Hmm. Do I need to flash the buffer more? Do I need to put a new line there? What, what do you want from me? Okay, so let's just have it print len twice and just confirm that it is actually here. Why? Why are you negative now? Am I casting something? Oh. Oh. It's an int 16. No, all right. I think I need to set that to be a double or something. How do you even print doubles like that. I'm, mm. Okay, so that doesn't need to be that. I was just printing the wrong value. Great. That's exactly what I wanted. And I forgot to write some parentheses somewhere. Okay, so it's always zero. That's just fine. That represents what I would expect with reality. So, let's start a new trace. Let's run bot. So then one is always a zero. Maybe I should only print it if it doesn't equal zero. Why does it say port unreachable? Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna quickly do if len doesn't equal zero 
and then we print that. And then we delete the trace.txt. And then we bot it with a fresh Wireshark. So it's always zero. Why? You don't have to be this way. Why is it always receiving zero? Check out the trace. It's not receiving anything. Why? Okay, so receiving buff entries, that's not When is that incremented? Add to receive buff. Receive. Okay, so this happens when I call process packet data. And when is that called? Is that a recursive function? It's a big function. Process two. TCP process. Drive packets. Should I be running drive packets? Drive. TCP drive packets. I am running that. Looks like it's what I'm doing. So let's see. Drive packets that goes through the sockets. Uh, resend some stuff that sends the outgoing stuff. Wait, is there any receive stuff here? There's outgoing. So this should be receiving, right? Um, let's check out FTP actually. Apps. Um, Let's just try doing telnet and let's see what TCP stuff we have. Okay, so it receives it, receive buffer plus bytes in buffer, bytes to read, minus bytes in buffer. What are you actually doing? This is really confusing, but that's okay. That's part of the DOS experience. We have the receive buffer. Init stack one. Wait, what's init stack do? TCP sockets one. Yeah, so I got two there for some reason. So I might just do init stack here and change that to one.
Okay, so what if I remove... What if I'm... It shouldn't matter at all. Ooh. Packet process single, drive up, drive packets. Then we have the buffer. And then we try and receive on the buffer. And we always get an empty length. And in the trace, in the trace, let's just go to the bottom. It says received eight, sent eight. So what does that mean? How does it determine the amount of packets I've received? Is it unable to understand that there's TCP packets? Do I have to feed them? Packet received 178, TCP source, dest payload lengths. Okay, so it is actually processing packets. However, the payload length is in the negative. Could it possibly be throwing it out? No, nope, there's payload length 65 there. Dest. And then it has a different port. That's a bit strange. It's changing ports each time. Although that might be the IP layer or something, because at TCP, it does show that it gets stuff and it acts it. So let's look for the magic term payload len and just see where we are in the code. So it processes it, it checks the sum, it receives them. Does it copy it? If there's an owning socket, does it say there's no socket? No socket for packet, sent reset. Okay, so that could be the issue here. Is that why the Telnet thing is not working? So it goes through the table, it checks the source and dest source dest. Source, test, source. It, uh, that looks like it got cut off a bit because that's just 0 0.2.0667 and then it has the port there. That might be a print error. That looks like it. Dust 57. DST57, what about here, DST0, just search DST. I'm not sure how reliable this is. Especially since payload length is all messed up. Yeah, so that looks shifted a bit. I'm not sure if that's an error I made or just a bug in the program. Uh, 
Yeah, so all that is shifted. So let's just look at what other dest we have. Dest. 20562, 20562. Um, and that seems fine, it's connected. So let's look at the next packet. 20562, I think that's working just fine. Then we receive something from that and we have a different packet destination. So why would that be? Does it have the sequence number? Wait, sent reset? So is sending not working either? Oh, it's sending a reset packet because that's not going well. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting packets that I shouldn't be getting. And those are being ignored, and that's completely fair. But I do have like the proper packets here. Oh, is that sending? No, that's processing. Hmm. Okay, so we sent 57 bytes and that would be the TCP send. And then we get something here on the right destination. And then we send something in response. Then we receive something again, sending 54 packets. So that would be the reset, I guess. Yes. So why are we getting packets on the wrong port. Do we get any on the right port? So if the hypothesis is correct and that things are on the wrong port, we can head on over to bot.old here. Um, and find where we receive packets. Oops. Oops. And check out the head um sorry, the packet we're getting. So TCP header. So let's just do a quick printf of the TCP header here. TCP um, dest port. And then we'll set that to an I and we'll do TCP and we'll quickly look in here for the header. test port and let's try and make that T 
TCP header. So that's actually the wrong class. TCP header. DOS source test. What's the test? I should be probably checking in here. Test. What's test port? Okay, so that is um, dest. So let's just space that out and w make it instead. All right, and let's fire up bart.com. So we get a dest port there of 7221. 7221. So it doesn't look like the desk port is actually changing in the bot code that we have. Um, which is what I would like. So could it be that receive is messing up the desk port? What we could do is try and read the packets like we did here. Oops. And we'll just see if we can uh, if zero this out and read some packets. So packet. Um, so let's just grab TCP header, TCP equals, whoops. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, you went AT packet while packet equals unit at um, sock incoming dot dq should probably not be calling this actually is that the right amount that seems like it no that doesn't i'm just going to put another one there good um, we're going to do IP header, IP equals IP header, packet plus size of ETH header. Yep, so no pointer there. Let's see if I wrote that properly. Nope. TCP header. Oh, am I writing spaces? Okay, fine. TCP header, IP payload pointer. And then we're just going to printf stv out dest port i tcp dest. Okay, that might actually be fine. Let's see how that goes. Still no packets? You sure? So we're just not getting... Okay. Um, why? Oh, there we go. No, that looks like the desk port is the same. Negative two seven six nine. 
And that sounds like I do have the two packets, so... What's up with that, huh? I'll just compare that to the port that I chose at the start. Um, so we get the socket, we connect the socket, and we check the source port. Source port. And let's dobby make that. I mean, if this is a bug, then I should probably fix it, right? Yeah, so that's not working. I'm getting packets from the wrong destination port. Consistently so. Why is that? Is it because... I've been using the wrong sized port? And it's been reading past memory? That sounds like something that it could be. What's LCL port? You went 16. Unsigned integer 16t. Okay. Um, so let's just see if changing that would help. I'm not entirely sure if it would help. But if it's currently reading it as a negative port, then that would be bad, right? Um... So, if this works, this is on me for not using the right types. Nope. Okay. I'm not writing it as a signed number though, am I? I should be printing it as a U. Where we go? Okay, now that, oops, no, no thanks. No, the destination port is different. Why? Uh, it's consistently different. So, what's up with that, huh? Let's go check with the old bot code and see what is happening. Um, what did I use for source port up here? Oh, local port. Oops. Yeah, no, actually that's right. No, I don't want to run it less. Okay, bot1.com. Yeah, so that's different too. So... Why? Why are we getting the wrong input? Okay. Okay, so... Let's just quickly do some sanity checks. Um, hex 50280 Oh no! Is this an endiness thing? Okay, so somewhere the code is not converting the endiness, and I guess Linux is using big endian to do network ports or something, or slurp, or I don't know, something's happening here. Um, 
we have like three layers of junk to go through. Um, this is going to be hell. Um, okay, so let's just actually check our traffic logs here and see what we can figure out. What is the port that Slurp is actually using or SoCat or whatever it is. I'm getting angry. Not really. Um, does SoCat have a debug option? Let's actually check this out. So that goes... 52234. So we're going to look for 50218 or 10948. So I don't see any of those ports. So it may be that Slurp is corrupting this or something. Um, either way, not good. Um, zero out of 10. Don't at me again. Slurp should be working fine. Oh, we also got the other SL driver going in. Okay, so. Slurp is the one that would be handling the packets, correct? I guess, maybe. Um. Why would Slurp, Slurp would not be, Slurp would not be converting the ports. It would just be passing stuff. That's an intermediate, right? I mean, I hope. This is tricky. So what could we even do here to figure out where the error is? Um... Okay, so what we have here is, can I just add a column? No. So, I suppose the first thing to do is find out where these are. So 10948 or 50218. So, Let's look at the streams we have. We have this one. Um, that's at source port 1234. Dash port 4934. And then 667 is at 52234. 52234, so that would be SoCat, I imagine. And SoCat would be talking to Slurp through STD in. So I wouldn't see that here. However, we would see that being passed to DOSBox. So we would see that inside the Slurp stream, I imagine. So, what is in the slurp stream? That's not the slurp stream. Get out of here. Out. Away. Okay, hex dump. Let's see. It's framing the packets with something. So, let's try and figure out what format this is. Is it just... I'm not sure. It has to include the IP stuff, right? So let's just have a look for these values. So what am I looking for? C42A. C4, 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 C4. 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 I don't immediately see any kind of C42A. Um, 
let's see, um, one, two, three, four. So this would be sending it to DOSBox. C4, to a somewhere here. C045800. So that's some kind of header. And then we have this here, which is variable. That seems kind of reliable. So is this being encoded in something that I don't understand? Obviously, yes. Um, I would say that it would look like that the packets start and finish around here, I believe. And it's still not actually closing because I suppose because it hasn't acknowledged that it's the right uh, program. So we just have this mysterious set of packets, uh, sorry, bytes here. So I'm going to enter some of these into Google. And we'll see what's up with that. Um, rather than reading the slurp code. I believe there's no overhead between DOSBox and that this is just slurp. All right, so let's just search up slit protocol. And we do a little mouse dance. Serial line. So is this an RFC? That'd be good. I think this is it. Non-standard for transmission. Non-standard? Okay, so just. So is there escaped stuff? Is there no standard here? Is this escaped? Is there like escape stuff? Or is that like an extra stuff? Let's go to this one. And let's go to this one. Oh boy. All right. Indicates end of packet. Three. Okay, it's byte stuffing. So what would we send here? We'd send an end character. Then we'd escape it. Otherwise not. Okay. So let's see. What's 300 uh, decimal in hex? Have fun, cars. Um, let's see. Damn it. There. Is this what I'm looking at? I wish there was like a way in Wireshark for me to like forcefully. Set something to be. Um, interpreted as a protocol. What even is this? What? The world is a dangerous place for bits. All right. 
So, is this what it is? Could this be what it is? I would like this. So let's just see. There's escape and there's end. So the end character is 12C. And so it would send 12C. That can't be right. That's octal. Uh... Can I just do oct, octal 300, uh, octal 300, I think that's octal, end character, is that just the ASCII end character? No, it's outside ASCII. Oh my god, I'm getting thrown out by this. C0, so... C0, that's one byte, and that doesn't look like it has any kind of end. So you know what, oops, uh, I'm just going to paste this into the internet. MAC address. Hey, that could be it. This could be the Ethernet frame. All right, let's pretend it's the Ethernet frame. That would be that would be the MAC address there. What's my MAC address? So the MAC address here, what about here? They're both using the same MAC address? I don't think so. Okay. This is fine. Maybe it's not the slip protocol. Maybe it's slurp protocol and I've just searched up the wrong thing. No, that's just a program. And I think it's using slip. Maybe it's in the fact. Okay. I guess we're going to have to search up in our slurp code. Slurp. Read me, documentation, anything. Slurp remains insecure, got it, great, perfect. Docs. Slurp.doc. Oh my god, is this it? So, slip slash ppp. Okay, so... Is this going to have like anything about the protocol? Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. No references. Nothing. Okay. Is it this? Is that a fact? That's a mailbox file? Just let me open it with Vim. No, this looks like trash. I don't want this. 
That's so small. All right. Okay, so let's... Let's start ruling things out. So, we're using Slip and DOSBox. Those should not at all be touching TCP. DOSBox should just be connecting to the serial port. So, it's not DOSBox. Ether SL. That's just an Ethernet driver. So, that's not it. So, it's either MTCP or Slurp. Does Slurp have a history of messing up port stuff? Now, I could probably figure that out by... connecting to something with Slurp. But let's just check out the source code first to see if Slurp does, in fact, munge any destination ports, especially since I'm using the proxy stuff. Slap. So, could it be SoCap that's messing this up? No, I'm only using SoCap to connect to Slip. Okay, so Slurp here is actually just using the frame end and stuff. That's cool. So I should in I should look at Slurp.h for that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't give me anything useful. Okay, um... Where's the proxy part? TCP output. You know what, I'm just going to head on over to here. Host to NS. So what if we go to um, desk port equal? Native network to HS test. Okay, so that seems to be working fine. And it goes through the same code as the source stuff. So both the source port and the destination port seem like they should be correct. So it would seem that this is not an MTCP issue. However, I'm not too sure. It does... Yeah, it just does that. So, this is looking like a slurp issue, I think. So... Is it outputting pretty stuff? Hmm. Enter HS. Okay, so. I removed the dump code from that, and I'm regretting that a little bit now. But that's just how life be sometimes. Wait. I'm not doing the H2 host thing here.
also the the destination port is fine. So why am I not getting oh So it is actually getting stuff. Okay, fine. But it's not receiving it. Actually not fine. Is that pointed to the buffer? Is that buffer thing dereferencing the wrong memory? Hang on a second. No, user buffer length. Is that negative by accident? So it is receiving it. Got it. Well, that was me being a dummy and a complete waste of time. So why isn't this receiving? What if I set the length to be something else like uh, what if I do length two? Will that work better because it's unsigned or something? No. Okay. So it does have a packet there. And it does seem to be that it is actually copying it into the buffer. I think. I mean, receive buff entries or use a buff len. That's definitely not true. What if the state is wrong? Well, we'd be getting that error. So receive buff entries here must be zero. And that can only be zero if Is our receive buffer too small? And that's not filling it. That could be it. Um, add to receive buff. So it should be saying that we drop to the packet if that's not the case. So let's go back to DOSBox and try and just read this trace. Yes, all the way down, please. So this does not convert it properly. This does not set the value and that just led me on a false chase. Okay. TCP source, TCP send. Oh, is it actually checking based on without converting? Wait a second. Is that what's happening? Um, match. What would owning socket? TCP dust port. Is that converted? Yes. Okay. All right. Why? Why do you have to be like this? You're embarrassing everyone. State is now fin weight. Um, 
Okay, so you should have received 60 bytes. That looks like it's receiving it though. The destination is correct. And then it sets the source. What does source do? Oh, so no bad checksum, packets received. No socket for packet, does it say that? No, it doesn't. So what's it doing? It should be processing it. I should have a packet. Why don't I have a pa Okay, let's just delete this trace and try again. Oops. File. Quit. I'm getting delirious at this point. So let's just wait a bit for some packets. Uh -huh. Look at those packets. We're getting some of them. Is that enough packets? It should have a packet about closing the link when it times out in a little bit. But I might just hit Alt X now and quit. <sighs> okay. Look at the trace file and try and gain some insight. Try and try and understand IP process, IP source, payload length. Um, it has zero. That's weird. Removing sent packets with secrets now. Okay, so. It sends it here. Hmm. See, it says no socket for packet there. I need to check the ident field so I can line up which packets are actually what I need. But let's just go here. There's five packets received, so let's just count them. TCP packet, that's an art packet, packet TCP. One, what's that about? Length 44, protocol 6. So that might be a start or a handshake. We have a connected here, so that's actually one packet. Um, then we have this one here. I'm not sure what that is. No socket for packet there. Then we Send a shutdown one. What? See, the destination should be fine. Okay, we need to get the ident and figure this out. Otherwise, we're just going to be here forever. Oops. Um, what should the ident be? Oh, it's an IP packet thing, huh? Okay. Um, 
let's just head back to our bot source. Please, I just want to have some packets. I want this to work. I didn't think it would be this difficult. And that's why I say every stream. Okay, so let's go to TCP lib, grab ident. Okay, so it's actually ident there. All right, fine, whatever. Screw it. Um, let's see. Um, I don't you. This seems like what I want. So let's try that. Nope. I uh, did the wrong thing. I made a typo. Grr. Okay. Nine three five. Nine three six. Okay. So. I did 935 and 936. Why are you not connecting? Uh, not showing up in my receive buffer. Oops. B trace. 935. 935. Yep, and that processes it and it acts it. It acts it. What? Oh. Oh, I'm boiling mad at this point. Okay, let's just read this again. Do I need to set a buffer somewhere? No, those are, those are just unused. Great. Thanks. Huh. Uh. So it actually does seem like it's sending an ACK back. So let's head on over to this oldest unact sec. So let's go to oldest unact. So it processes the packet. I wish we knew what TCP state we were in. Maybe we're in an invalid state. It looks like this is actually, okay, so. We don't destroy the socket. Okay, is the act proper and the seek proper? Yep. And that would be like what it needs to be, I think. Process packet data. So it actually enqueues it. It generates the packet here. It enqueues the packet. It has room. 
what what if we don't have a receive buffer method one the user gets access to the raw packet and responsible for freeing it if the user is not responsive it will cause the packet driver to start dropping incoming packets This incoming data gets copied to the ring buffer and the packet. Okay, if using either method there is no room to store the incoming data, do not update the acronym. Okay, so we don't actually have a receive buffer here. And if there's no receive buffer... Then we can't use receive. Okay, fine. Um... Which way am I going to use? Well, since I'm going to be... Mm, I'm going to have to be splitting it into lines. Um, let's see. So, where do I get the receive buffer from? Set receive buffer. Okay, so let's set that. Is that what we need? Um, okay, so we're going to just go here and we're going to go sock set receive buffer and we'll just buffer uh, 1k. That's actually a lot But I just want to see if this is the issue. No. <gasps> oh my god, it it hits the it gets the len. It gets the len. But it doesn't get the len too. Oh no, wait. zero and then it receives it into the buffer so that's two copies I think one yeah it copies it from the packet buffer and then we copy it here so that's not exactly great but let's print this let's finally print this Um, yeah, okay. Let's if this out. Nothing. Okay. Why are you not working? Did I not set length? Did I mess this up again? Like, to be honest, I'm a little bit gone at the moment. What? I set that to zero? Okay, now we try. Ah! <gasps> But now will it disconnect if I get disconnected? Because that's like the second thing that needs to be figured out. If 
freaking freaking frig. Frigging frig. Um, are we just gonna get I should probably check this again to see how it checks if the remote side is closed. Remote closed. Is remote closed? Okay, so that should actually just close the link then. It shouldn't have multiple ones, it should just be the end of it, yeah? Yeah, you're gonna close? I'm not running shut down, am I? Or I might be. Remote closed. So if there's a remote closed, then it will just drive the packets again. So closing isn't working. Why? 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 Is remote closed? Is that not the right value? Let's just do a while true for now. Um, if sock is remote closed, then let's do a uh, remote as closed quitting. Break. Is this it? see as well. Come on. I really should set the time out to be quicker, actually. Like, I don't know how long the time out is. It's confusing. Okay, so it closes the link. And it doesn't close the remote. I don't think. Why not? So if it's closed, then it breaks out of what? Is it just genuinely not sending me a remote closed thing? Has it just not closed it? Hang on. Will that kill all the clients? Let me just try killing it. Let 
No, that's definitely not closing with the remote. Okay, so let's just check again. Remote closed, and see if my socket is remote closed. Um, what about doesn't equal zero? Could that help? Actually, we should probably move this down to after we read all the packets. Okay, so yeah, it does say closing link there, but it's not getting the correct state packets. Packet process single, drive up, drive packets. Then it goes through the buffers and it checks if it's closed. And then it runs close. Did I run free socket at the bottom? I must have, right? Yeah. Um, and F close TRC stream. I might just have to do that. Because I am tracing. Oof. Um, so, why? Um, okay, so more debugging. Where does it set the state? What about is closed? No, is remote closed would have that. Close. Okay, so we'll have to open up Wireshark again. And let's just W make this. And I hit the restart stream thing there. TRC stream, you know what? Is that a capital T? If not, then I think I just don't care enough. Okay, so that is it. So we start the bot. Close all my open terminals that I'm not using. Um, log in its root. Let me get the closing link, and it should send a closing link. I think. No? Okay, let's unpack this. Let's follow this stream. And fin, it sends a fin. Now, let's check the trace. Using whatever editing command I can remember at the moment. Or not, because this is just going to take too long. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, I do.
Let's see. State is now fin weight. Okay. So it actually, f oh wait, no, was that after I press X? No, so that is when I shut down. So, is that state there actually just a bit mask that they're outputting as a character? Gross. Okay, so I said it to shut down. But it's not getting the, the fin, I don't think. Hmm. What if I just make it exit when I close that? Uh, well, that's actually a very bad idea. Don't do that. Um, So it sent me a fin and then a fin. So let's see what the slurp sent. I mean, that looks like it sent a packet. Hmm. Does it get a close when I use the other one? The, the reference implementation, if you will. Oh, so that just didn't start. Okay, um, let's start the ISED. Let's delete the trace file first, and then, oops, delete trace.txt. Close without saving, and boot bot up, and then stop it, and see if it gets the proper close. Perhaps this is something that I broke before and I'm only forgetting now. Sorry, only remembering now. Because I think I might have actually had something here. So bot.old. Yeah, I'm actually remembering now perhaps that I did break this. Okay, so let's go over to the netcat program here and just see if we see anything that looks useful. Wait after close. Set receive buffer, right? That's something that I should, that would help me. Then it connects. It checks if S to the end is closed. Is it possible that... No, it's not that the receive um, API has a different way of indicating closure, does it? No, okay. So it does look like here it will just have, um, it will receive it, it will write it out, that's fine. There's no data it will break. So that's that loop, it just reads everything. And then it will check if it's closed, and then if it's closed, it will close our side. So, 
what does close on remote do? Let's just scroll down a bit. Close on remote. Okay, so that's just something to check out. Has this closed yet? Nope. Oh, I hit space and it closed. Is that because I tried to send it? That's strange. Could it have been waiting for my input? Okay, so is remote closed? We might actually want to check out um, some other TCP application. Like, I will look at Telnet again, actually. Okay. Oh, you've got Y modem. That's pretty cool. Remote close. So it actually does, it reads all the bytes it can, then it checks if the remote is done. Hey Lok says, what's up? And then we have all this junk and it doesn't seem to use remote done. if done and not remote done. So it sets a variable and then it just breaks. Oh, are you a bot? Um, answer this question. What's the first five digits of pi? There you go. Let's see. P.S. Science and technology is the best. Okay, so obviously the bot I'm making is not going to be used to spam channels like this. So let's uh, let's just ban and report. The report button is hidden in Twitch. Can you provide more detail about this issue? Um, just a bot. There. So is it possible that it has actually closed? It's just waiting for something. I don't know. How would I test that? Hmm. See, I'm not getting that message at all, that remote closed message. Is it possibly waiting for a key? No, it wouldn't be. Okay, so let's just try the bot again. Remote has closed quitting. Okay, so it has detected that it's closed 
when it doesn't actually connect properly. And that's interesting. So let's start the IRC server. And let's stop it and let's try typing something. No. Uh, okay, so in all of these, not ping, um, Telnet is remote closed. It just seems that they're able to figure it out. Is this because they are sending something and that sets the state? When is the state set? Um, closed. Fin. Let's search for fin. TCP shut down. Wait, does does close? Cool, cool. Yeah, I don't need shut down then. I don't care. Shut down. Good. That just closes it. Um, was that part of the issue? Probably not. Okay. So if we get a fin packet. Wait, does this check the state? Let's try seeing where it sets the state. So does it only set the state when it receives a packet? That would make sense. But is it possible that uh, okay, so it's looking like what's happening is that the fin stuff um, to actually indicate that it's finished might actually be sent to the wrong port and that we're only finding out um, based on a response from sending something. <sighs> is there an easy way to fix that? Um, I don't know. Let's just try and confirm this idea with the trace. So let's see. So we get some, uh, get some packets. Seems fine. It calls shutdown. Let's just check why shock one more time just to see exactly what's up. So it sends the ACK. Five, two, four, seven, zero. So we send an ACK and then it sends, you know, a finish and an ACK back, I guess. And then we ACK. And then there's a request? What? That doesn't seem valid. All right, whatever. That's just probably the space. Um, and that causes us to get back a reset in response. So my current idea is that, um, let's actually head back to 
the bot.old and look at the trace file and just see what's up. So we should send it and get the state. Connected, get some stuff. I think sending is an act. So sending 55, that sounds like it's sending just a space. And then we get 60 back. No. What is going on here? Okay, let's just calm down. Does this have the ident anywhere? That would be an IP. Ident 1015. So I really doubt it's going to actually match here, but let's just check it out. Ident. No. Okay. And the destination is 10641. And then we send something and then it closes. And then it sends. Oh my god, this is actually doing my head in at this point. I might be way past my ability to fix it at this moment. Hi, Paula Bean. What's up? Sending 55 bytes, dumping 54. So, in order to fix this, perhaps... You didn't know MS-DOS has a TCP IP stack? Um, by default, I don't think it does, but you can add one. And what I'm using is I'm using the um, Ether SL um, driver in MS-DOS, then connecting that over a serial port that's in DOSBox connected to a Linux program called Slurp. And that's making it quite tricky to figure this out because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I might need to test this on better hardware. I'm not sure. Hmm. Does Slurp have any debug modes I could borrow? I typed five zeros. I typed them, okay. Um, Um, but, but, da, da, da. Oh, I want a verbose. Have you already tried a very simple TCP connection than just sending and receiving a packet of 20 bytes, for example? Um, yes, so I went through that earlier, and the problem that I'm having at this moment is that, um, let me just go back here and run my bot code. Um, Whoa, whoa, wrong code, wrong code. This is not the right code. Um, I don't think that was the right code. I hope not because I have a bug then. Wow. I don't know, do I even have text that says that? Oh, okay. Um. I think it's just because I have, I haven't got my RC server started. Oh no, I haven't got Slurp started. All right, um, let me just start Slurp again. And then DOSBox, and then I'll show you. Oh, yes, my RC server. So here we go. It will connect to the RC server and I can close the connection, and that's fine. But when the IRC server closes the connection, um, the TCP IP stack isn't telling me. So if I do, for example, that, and then I stop it, 
it closes the link. Um, it does, in fact, send a fin packet, as I've seen with other traces, but uh, it does not flag the driver. Uh, the TCP stack does not flag this. And I'm trying to figure out why exactly that is. Um, one workaround is actually to send a packet and it will tell me that um, it's closed. But I really don't want to do that. But I might because, you know, to be totally real, IRC uses heartbeats anyway, so it's not like this is a big problem. But at the same time, I just really would like to know what's up with it. And I have a suspicion Are you sure the problem is in the TCP IP stack and not in the IRC, IP, IRC interpretation layer above it? Um, so the IRC interpretation layer, um, if you mean that server, I'm not sure. I can check that in a second. Um, but I'll show you my bot code. This is basically it. It sets up the stack here, connects it, connects a socket, um, processes some packets and then prints the packets. So there's actually no IRC interpretation going on. This is just plain TCP stuff. So I might actually try that telnet thing now. Um, no? Alright, that's right, I closed the server. The problem that it might be is that I have a like the equivalent of plugging like ten power adapters together. I think the fin is being lost somewhere there because it goes from my IRC server here, which if I do stop, you know, connection closed by foreign host, that works. But on top of that I have Slurp and I have SoCat. And I'm wondering now if it's actually SoCat that is causing a problem and not closing when it should. So let's try that. Um, SSL chat. And then we do stop. Ah, that is it, I think. Because I'm just using netcat. Why am I using netcat? Why did I choose netcat? Oh, this is terrible. Of course, I deserve this. Okay, so is netcat going to figure out um, when a TCP thing closes? I might just use SoCat. Um, SoCat TCP4. I think that would be it. Ah, uh, no. Okay, here we go. The problem is actually a semantic one here. I think. I'm not sure. No, it shouldn't be. It's netcat. All right. Can I connect to... So can I just pipe that to STD in? And then if I just background that, then I go stop. So what if I just change that to SoCat? Um, and then I restart slurp. Oops, come on DOSBox. Oh, Linux. Oh wait, no, I need to kill SoCat first. It doesn't look like 
I'm using a socket like that. Oh wait, um... Yeah, that looks like it there. So... Linux is just keeping that connection open because that's how it works. So, Linux reset TCP connection. This is something I probably should know. TCP kill, so I don't know that. Netstat, does Netstat do that? Is it gone already? Yes, okay. So let's boot this up again. This, this slurp, let's open up DOSBox. And maybe this will work. So it does actually kind of work now. It will quit, but now SoCat is just telling me that the connection's refused. Okay, thanks. Okay. And does this work? Yeah! It works! Oh, I'm so happy. So it was netcap. Yeah, just ignore that. Um, so this mess is not that bad. Okay. Well. Yep. Your uninformed question led to the solution. Um, I've been at this for a few hours, so it just kind of made me think about, um, let me just explain how it's set up. So you have the IRC server, and then that goes to, well, it went to Netcat, and that goes to Slurp, and then that goes to DOSBox, and that goes to EtherSL, and that goes to MTCP, and that goes to my app. So there's that huge stack in the middle of just junk that I need to debug. And I never considered that it would be Netcat. Um, in fact, I forgot about it. I was trying to figure out um, Slurp and MTCP. So that's actually pretty good. Um, what next? I should probably... I mean, ideally I'd want to connect to the serial port and output some stuff. But I already have one connected and that might just be for later. Um, I suppose I should actually... BIOS key? Isn't that good old Turbo C? Um, this is Whatcom, so yes. It is, it is, I'm running the C compiler in DOS for that uh, authentic feel. Um, I don't actually know why I have two BIOS keys here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to stop using a receive buffer because I'm going to have to copy it anyway. And let's just... if zero that out. Used ball and turbo C a long time ago. Nice. This is all before my time. Um, I just I started programming with Linux, and I haven't. Uh, well, I started programming with C plus plus on Windows, but it's like high level. And now I do most of my programming in Linux. So let's see. TCP. Can I get my length here? Let's just look at some old code that I had. Bot.cpp. So, some old code which I'm totally not ripping off at all. Um, so I'd have buffer free packet len 
and then user data would be okay. So let's just grab some user data here. This is like real top trash here. TCP plus TCP. What does that mean? That looks like a bug. All right, whatever. Oh no, it has the offset, the TCP get header then. So TCP, you went 80. 1987, it came on two five inch floppy disks. Yeah, um, sweet. a long time ago. I think if I was programming in the late 80s, I'd be like really into the fourth stuff because fourth was popular back then, but it's not now. Or Pascal. Um, I've never really liked C or C++. Okay, TCP plus TCP get TCP header length and then the length would be um, IP it was a good idea for Pascal back then, Turbo Pascal, but the standard Pascal is quite unusable. Yeah, um, I've only really played with free Pascal a bit, and to my understanding, it really um, copies that ID. So it, this looks kind of trashy, this code, and I'll be surprised if it compiles, but... Um, what we'll actually do is we'll actually um, set user data then equals just the null pointer. Um, and if that's off in, that's not going to be off in memory at the moment, but let's just say um, overflows because that's going to bite me. And then I'll just go um, incoming. S user data and then I'll just buffer free it. Standard Pascal has no notion of the machine or what it's running, not even a notion of what disk files are. All Pascal implementations are hacked up proprietary and incompatible extensions for that. Interesting. Buffer free packet. Okay, so let's see if this works. Um, if you're wondering what all these errors are, they're fine. Don't worry about them. Okay, that's not fine. But see, back then was really well defined in a bigger ecosystem, you could see to you could see to make real software. Yeah, I mean, C is still pretty common in uh, Unix land for writing software. But it uh, it is a pain for writing anything that kind of involves objects. Oh no! That should definitely be cast before then. Otherwise, it's going to be offset way into memory. I didn't actually read that message, but I'll be damned if I'm going to start reading today. Go 
C++, uh, sorry, not C, C's pointer arithmetic is just absolute madness. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. And ideally, that should have been quit out. But let's try again. Did I remove the code? Also in DOS you could easily corrupt any memory, even DOS itself. Yeah. It's not uh it's not the best thing. I'm uh I've had some of that experiences when I had to fix the damn interrupt handling in this. Okay, I have actual packet stuff happening here. Okay, let's hit that out. And let's decide what we're going to do here. Alright, um, yeah. Sock is remote closed. No, I should probably... I'm not sure exactly how to structure this loop. Now, I'm not sure about all this junk down here, which looks like it... Shouldn't be the exact thing. Why is payload pointer... What is that? Oh. So the IP stuff actually has some macros for that. So why does the TCP thing have it? Wrong folder. So what do you work with nowadays? TCP header, oops. HLAN bits, set, get HLAN. So the IP stuff has all this cool stuff there, but TCP thing doesn't. Okay, fine. So, we need to copy that to a line buffer. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be doing that today. Languages, if possible, I use Python, otherwise I fall back on a language which is suitable to solve a problem at hand. I came from a C++ background. C slash C++. Yeah. Um, I usually do systems programming, and Python is not really suitable for that. At least in my experience. At least on Unix. It might be different on Windows. Okay, so I need a function to process packets and ideally it would be something like next packet here although hmm let's see wall true drive up you know I might just leave those there and work on this first, so... Um, we would have... Oops, a function signature of you went 8t. Next packet. 
get next packet and we would have a socket there and that would be tcp socket suck and then that would just do use a linux to be in slash ubuntu freebsd os x and windows it works we use a mix of windows and linux systems interesting i've never tried os x um just seems like a bit of a headache for me. If not packet, return zero. OS X is called Mac OS nowadays. I think it's very Unixy. It is very Unixy, but it's also very locked down. So, depends on how much you care about that, I suppose. All right, shite, how am I going to copy that? Um, no, no, and let's put this up here. Okay. And then my expected stuff would be like, um, get next packet. should be packet data. Um, and then we should just delete all those. Packet data. And packet data and buffer free. Oh, I can't free that because it's not the right packet. All right. Okay. That's a headache. All right. So I should be making a function that takes a packet. Um, packet TCP data. You're right, macOS is closed source and Apple's flex to dictate what you can do with your computer on it. Yeah. It's not great. What's IP? Where did IP come from? Okay, so I forgot to copy that. That. And that doesn't give me the length either. You know what? That can stay fine. So this can just be my packet processor. Um, add shutdown. So let's see. If um, RC doesn't equal zero. STD air failed to connect. Um, and then we just go. Uh, what is my indentation? I need to format in a second. 
Um, while true there. I'll put that in an elf statement actually. There. Dev bot. Why do I have a bot at all there? And then we'll check the memory map in a second. Looks like a lot of. Okay, so bot. Okay, so it is time to check the memory map. I might be closing up this stream now, actually. Um, so the memory map here. Size, CCF0. It's onions all the way down. The IC packet is wrapped in a TC packet. is wrapped in an IP packet. is wrapped in an Ethernet frame. Which is sometimes wrapped in a PPP frame. And then you have all the uh, ISP stuff below that that us commoners aren't allowed to know. Um... So yeah, that might be it for today. Um, that was a headache of a stream. Yeah, slip does encapsulation. Um, let's see. I really do want to get, um, should that be STDIR? Yeah, that should be STDIO instead. Otherwise I can't uh, read to it properly. No, nope, that's strange, okay. So I think that's everything done for today. Um, hopefully next time I might, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I want to leave the serial um, ports. Yes, the brain does need rest. Um, so the next thing I need to do is, I think that's actually all the TCP stuff done aside from sending some stuff. And what I'm going to do is just abstract over it by um, having a line buffer and then read um, packet contents into the line buffer and then have the bot go over the lines. And I think that would give me what I need. Um, I would also really like to do um, some kind of serial port or something that can indicate to Linux that um, the code is still running. So I kind of watchdog because eventually I would like to package this up as some kind of service and run it and have it restart if the watchdog fails. And I think that's it. <sighs> So thanks for hanging out in my stream. What is this? Oh. Reset panel. Yeah, see you later.